The paradox of the unexpected examination is a thought experiment that explores the logical contradictions that arise when considering the possibility of an unexpected exam. In this paradox, a student is told by their professor that they will have a surprise exam on a day next week, but not on Friday. The student reasons that since they cannot have the exam on Friday, they will know by Thursday that the exam will be on Friday. But if the student knows that the exam will be on Friday, then it is not a surprise, and the professor cannot give the exam on Friday. This creates a paradoxical situation with no clear solution. The paradox of the unexpected examination is a classic example of a logical paradox, where the rules of logic seem to contradict each other. It is similar to other paradoxes like the liar paradox, where a statement is made about itself, and the crocodile paradox, where a statement is made about a future event. However, the paradox of the unexpected examination is unique in that it involves a real-world scenario that is familiar to many students. One possible solution to the paradox is to say that the professor is simply lying to the student, and there will be no exam at all. This solution is unsatisfying, as it does not address the underlying contradiction that arises from the student's reasoning. Another solution is to suggest that the student's reasoning is flawed, and that they cannot know for certain which day the exam will be on, even if they know it will not be on Friday. However, this solution is also unsatisfying, as it seems to contradict the initial assumption that the exam is unexpected. Perhaps the most interesting aspect of the paradox of the unexpected examination is the way in which it highlights the limitations of human reasoning. We like to think of ourselves as logical beings, capable of making rational decisions based on evidence and deduction. However, the paradox shows that there are limits to our reasoning, and that sometimes the rules of logic can break down in unexpected ways. In fact, the paradox of the unexpected examination has real-world implications beyond the classroom. It illustrates the challenges of predicting the future, and the difficulty of making accurate forecasts in complex systems. For example, economists and weather forecasters face similar challenges when trying to predict future events, and the paradox highlights the inherent uncertainties involved in these types of predictions. In the paradox, the student's knowledge of the exam seems to influence the outcome of the exam itself. This raises questions about the nature of cause and effect, and suggests that our intuitions about these concepts may not always be reliable. Overall, the paradox of the unexpected examination is a fascinating thought experiment that highlights the limitations of human reasoning and challenges our assumptions about the nature of causality and prediction. While there may be no clear solution to the paradox, it remains an intriguing puzzle that continues to captivate and intrigue students and scholars alike. The Monty Hall paradox is a classic probability problem that has fascinated mathematicians, statisticians, and game show fans for decades. The paradox is named after Monty Hall, the host of the game show Let's Make a Deal, which popularized the problem in the 1970s. The Monty Hall paradox is a variation of a common probability problem known as the three-door problem. In the original problem, there are three doors, behind one of which is a prize, and behind the other two are goats. The contestant chooses one of the doors, and then the host, who knows what is behind each door, opens one of the remaining doors to reveal a goat. The contestant is then given the option to switch their choice to the other unopened door, or stick with their original choice. The Monty Hall paradox adds a twist to the three-door problem. In this version, the contestant again chooses one of three doors, but this time the host immediately reveals one of the other two doors to be a goat. The contestant is then given the option to switch to the remaining unopened door, or stick with their original choice. The paradox arises from the fact that, counterintuitively, switching doors gives the contestant a better chance of winning the prize. Many people believe that the odds are 50-50 after one door is revealed to be a goat, but in fact, switching gives the contestant a two-thirds chance of winning, while sticking with their original choice only gives them a one-third chance. The Monty Hall paradox is named after Monty Hall, the host of Let's Make a Deal, who popularized the problem on a show in the 1970s. The problem was first posed in a letter to the American statistician in 1975 by Steve Selvin, a professor of biostatistics at the University of California, Berkeley. Selvin called the problem the Three Prisoners Problem, and it was later renamed the Monty Hall Problem after Hall brought it to a wider audience. The Monty Hall paradox gained widespread attention in 1990 when it was featured in a column by Marilyn Vos Savant in Parade magazine. Vos Savant, who was listed in the Guinness Book of World Records for having the highest recorded IQ, received thousands of letters from readers who disagreed with her solution to the problem. This sparked a heated debate among mathematicians and statisticians, and the problem has been the subject of numerous academic papers and books. Many people are convinced that switching doors makes no difference, and that the odds are 50-50 after one door is revealed to be a goat. 
However, this is not the case, and there are several explanations for why switching gives the contestant a better chance of winning. One way to think about the problem is to consider the two scenarios separately, sticking with the original choice, and switching. In the first scenario, the contestant has a one-third chance of choosing the correct door, and a two-thirds chance of choosing a goat. When the host reveals one of the other doors to be a goat, the remaining door still has a one-third chance of being the prize, while the door the contestant originally chose still has a two-thirds chance of being a goat. So why does switching the door matter? It all comes down to the probability of the door you chose being correct. In the beginning, you have a one-third chance of picking the winning door. That means you have a two-thirds chance of not picking the winning door. When the host opens one of the losing doors, they are effectively giving you information. They are telling you that one of the other doors is a loser. Therefore, the two-thirds probability of the winning door being behind one of the doors you didn't choose now becomes a two-thirds probability of the winning door being behind the one remaining door you didn't choose. By switching, you are essentially betting on the probability that the winning door is behind the remaining door you didn't choose, which is two-thirds. By not switching, you are betting on the probability that the winning door is behind the door you originally chose, which is only one-third. To further illustrate this point, imagine if there were 100 doors instead of 3. You pick one, and then the host opens 98 of the remaining doors to reveal that they are all losers. Would you still want to stick with your original door or switch to the remaining unopened door? Clearly, the probability of the winning door being behind the door you initially chose is incredibly low, and it makes more sense to switch. The Monty Hall paradox is a counterintuitive example of probability that still confuses many people today. It teaches us to be careful when making assumptions about probability and to consider all the available information before making a decision. So, the next time you find yourself faced with a similar situation, remember the Monty Hall paradox and consider switching that door. The unexpected hanging paradox is a classic philosophical paradox that raises questions about the nature of truth, knowledge, and belief. The paradox is based on a hypothetical scenario involving a prisoner and a hangman, which seems to defy conventional logic and reasoning. The scenario goes as follows, a prisoner is sentenced to be hanged, and the date of the execution is unknown. The prisoner knows that the hanging will take place on a weekday and that he will be taken by surprise, meaning that he will not know the day of the execution until the hangman arrives to take him away. The prisoner reasons that he cannot be hanged on Friday because if he were still alive on Thursday, he would know that Friday was the day of the execution, which would contradict the condition of being taken by surprise. Therefore, he concludes that he must be hanged on one of the first four days of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. The hangman arrives on Wednesday, which means that the prisoner's reasoning is correct, and he knows that he will be hanged the following day. The paradox arises when the prisoner makes a seemingly paradoxical statement to the hangman. He says, you will hang me tomorrow, but it will be a surprise. At first glance, this statement seems nonsensical. If the prisoner knows that he will be hanged the next day, how can it be a surprise? Upon closer examination, the statement reveals a deeper level of meaning and raises profound philosophical questions. The paradox lies in the fact that the prisoner's statement appears to be both true and false at the same time. If the hangman hangs him on Thursday, then the statement is true because he was hanged on the day he expected it to happen. However, the statement is also false because it was not a surprise, as he predicted it. On the other hand, if the hangman decides to spare his life and not hang him on Thursday, then the statement is false because he was not hanged the next day. It is also true because it was a surprise that he was not hanged. This paradox raises questions about the nature of truth and belief. Can something be both true and false at the same time? How can we know what is true and what is not when our beliefs and perceptions are subjective and influenced by our experiences and biases? The paradox also highlights the limits of human knowledge and our ability to predict the future. Despite the prisoner's careful reasoning and deduction, he is ultimately unable to fully understand the situation and predict the outcome with certainty. The unexpected hanging paradox reminds us that we must be humble in the face of uncertainty and that our knowledge is always limited and incomplete. In conclusion, the unexpected hanging paradox is a fascinating thought experiment that challenges our assumptions about truth, knowledge, and belief. It invites us to think deeply about the nature of reality and the limits of our understanding, and it reminds us to approach life with an open mind and a willingness to embrace uncertainty. The omnipotence paradox is a philosophical problem that deals with the concept of omnipotence or the ability to do anything. It poses the question of whether an omnipotent being, such as God, can create a task that is impossible for even an omnipotent being to perform. The paradox arises because if the being can create such a task, then it is not omnipotent, but if it cannot create such a task, 
then it is also not omnipotent. The omnipotence paradox has been discussed by philosophers and theologians for centuries and has led to various debates and arguments. The paradox is also sometimes referred to as the paradox of the stone, as it is often formulated in terms of whether an omnipotent being can create a stone that is too heavy for it to lift. One way to understand the omnipotence paradox is to consider the attributes that are commonly associated with an omnipotent being. An omnipotent being is said to have the power to do anything, which means that it can create and destroy anything, change the laws of nature, and perform any task that is logically possible. However, the paradox arises when we consider whether an omnipotent being can create a task that is logically impossible to perform. To illustrate the paradox, let us consider the example of the stone. Can an omnipotent being create a stone that is too heavy for it to lift? If the being can create such a stone, then it is not omnipotent, because it cannot lift the stone. On the other hand, if the being cannot create such a stone, then it is also not omnipotent, because there is a task that it cannot perform. One possible solution to the omnipotence paradox is to redefine the concept of omnipotence. Some theologians and philosophers argue that omnipotence should not be understood as the ability to do anything, but rather as the ability to do anything that is logically possible. According to this view, the concept of a stone that is too heavy for an omnipotent being to lift is logically incoherent and therefore cannot be created. Therefore, an omnipotent being is still able to perform any task that is logically possible. Another possible solution to the omnipotence paradox is to question the assumption that omnipotence is a coherent concept. Some philosophers argue that the concept of omnipotence is inherently paradoxical and cannot be fully understood or defined. They argue that the paradox arises because we are trying to apply human concepts of power and ability to a being that is beyond human comprehension. The omnipotence paradox also has implications for theological debates about the nature of God. Some theologians argue that the paradox shows that the traditional concept of God as an all-powerful being is flawed and that we need to rethink our understanding of God's attributes. They suggest that instead of focusing on God's power, we should focus on God's other attributes, such as love, mercy, and justice. In conclusion, the omnipotence paradox is a fascinating philosophical problem that raises profound questions about the nature of power, knowledge, and belief. It challenges our assumptions about what is logically possible and invites us to rethink our understanding of omnipotence and other attributes of God. Ultimately, the paradox reminds us that our knowledge and understanding of the world and its mysteries are always limited, and that we must remain open to the possibility of the unknown and the unknowable. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this content. We truly appreciate your interest. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to our channel for more exciting content in the future.